Looking to create efficiencies in your real estate business using chat GPT. Today, we're going to share with you, in my opinion, one of the most valuable things you can do, which is how to teach it how to write emails, articles, blog posts, or any writing you're doing in your voice. Well, welcome to another episode of Real Estate AI Flash the podcast dedicated to you, the real estate agent, and to help you use AI to power your business. And today, as Jimmy alluded to, we're going to talk about how do you leverage ChatGPT to write like you? Because I've gotten, when I was early in my ChatGPT use, it started writing like, who is this? You know, And it wasn't really my own writing. And this is something that you should learn so you can master it. So when I write emails now, people don't know is Rajiv writing it or ChatGPT writing it because we've sort of learned how to train it to be writing in your style. And this episode is all about that. So let's dive in, Jimmy. So um, let's kind of take a step back and say, okay, I'm, I'm as you mentioned, emails, li LinkedIn posts, articles, blog posts, any writing you're doing. Uh, I'm a big believer in anything I'm going to do more than once, I need to create a system for it for driving efficiency, productivity, et cetera. So the first thing to make ChatGPT write like you is using the right mode in ChatGPT. So let's take a step back. There's three modes today. Um, there used to be a lot more, but some were collapsed into one, which is excellent. So GPT 3.5, which is the free ChatGPT, is the first mode that you get access to. And it's a great place to start. If you've never used ChatGPT, we recommend use that extensively so you can learn how to get comfortable with AI. The next mode is GPT default mode, which has now become multi-mode, which is text, image, uh, advanced data analysis, browse with Bing, all of them are lumped into that mode. The third one is GPT-4 with plugins. So we recommend for you to train GPT to write like you, you use the right mode, which is GPT with plugins, okay? So that's where you need to be. So you need you do need a paid account to truly master this. Uh, you could do a little bit of this in GPT 3.5, but you really can do all of it to truly gain time back with what we're gonna talk about. The next one is, anything else you wanna add, Jimmy, before we move yeah, on? Yeah, I just wanted to mention one thing that you know, when we were talking about this, first off, it's the best bargain in the world at $20 a month. But if you were wondering about this, imagine that you were going to write one blog post, one set of email that you were going to do maybe a campaign where it was going to be multi, you know, groups of emails that were going to be going out in a series. It would cost you more than $20 for one hour to get a good copywriter, much less one of the best copywriters ever created, and to be able to get them to study you and understand who you are and write it in your tone. I mean, you're talking about something that would be extremely expensive. So literally, if you're doing one type of writing per month, this right here alone, this efficiency right here alone will more than cover the $20 a month that you pay for that paid version, in my opinion. Yeah, a good analogy I give people, Jimmy, is GPT 3.5 is high school writing. And GPT-4 paid is like experience, 15 plus years of experience in that field, that whatever field that you wanted them to be. Right. So it's a steal of the decade, that 20 bucks, you know? So the second tip we'll give you is you got to teach GPT, chat GPT, the, give it, feed it articles you've written. So as an example, the reason we ask you to go with plugins, we always believe that using plugins gives you the most expanded view into chat GPT and gives it a window into your workflow. What do I mean by that? So let's say you've written articles on a website. You can give it links. If you have a browser enabled plugin, like a browser op or a walk script, it will read specific articles that are published on the web. So you don't have to copy and paste them. So give it articles you've written. The more you give it, the more it can learn your writing style. But give it enough. I'd say five to seven articles you feed it, then I think it'll start to develop a liking to your style in terms of understanding your style so it can generate things that you'd want in your voice. Now, the other important part around articles you've written is feed it consistent style. What do I mean by that? You can feed it like sometimes I'm, I get into this email writing, Jimmy, that has bullets. I write stuff in bullets, but sometimes I feel like I need to write in conversation style. 
you you can mix the two because you don't want to confuse chat GPT. What is your writing style? Is it conversational? Is it bullet form? So you want to pick the writing style you're most comfortable with, things that really talk about how you write and feed it that particular consistent style. Very important. Uh, otherwise, the output is not going to be what you expect. Make sense? So the- yeah, absolutely. Can can I add one thing? In case there's somebody that is catching up with us and maybe missed it on an earlier episode, when we're talking about the plugins, let's talk about that just briefly about the difference of some of these plugins and what we could be looking for and how they're utilized. And the example that you've given me, which was so beneficial, was is to think of your telephone, your iPhone, and the iPhone can make phone calls but it's the apps that you place on there. And that's kind of what the plugins are. Do you want to expand on that just a little bit to give someone that may not be familiar with what a plugin is? Now, I'm glad you remember that, Jimmy. That a great analogy is an iPhone analogy. Like, you know, the latest one is an iPhone 15 Pro. And if you buy that iPhone, by default, you get some basic apps that make you do some basic things, email, phone, browse the web. But I can use Instagram, for example, till I download the Instagram app. The power of the iPhone comes to full potential when you have the right apps on your phone. Same way, GPT-4 is an iPhone 15 Pro, but if you don't have the right plugins enabled, you don't really get the full power. So think of plugins as apps on your phone, and you can enable them today. You can enable three at a time. So we call it plugin packs, and we'll do a future episode purely on plugins because there's episodes that are definitely on plugins. But... Just know that you need to enable the right plugins so that you can have the right conversations. As far as this topic is concerned about writing style, always have an internet enabled plugin because you never know when you'd want to have access to the internet. My top plugins, just I'm do a little plugin, um, a plugin for plugins. Um, so I'll do internet enabled plugin for browser app or walk script. I'll have something for reading PDFs, like an AI PDF. Okay, and then those are probably good. And maybe YouTube summaries, if you have a lot of YouTube videos uh, that can read scripts, it can get voice from there too, but because you can go any way you want in a, in a specific chat. So feed it consistent style, back to where we were. Feed it, feeding it consistent. So if I've written LinkedIn articles, five of them, I have blog posts on my blog, I can feed URLs, links to those things. So it'll learn it. And then here comes the other one that you should be aware of, which is make sure our one of our earlier episodes was about four Ps and rise. You still need to prime the engine properly so that you get the right output. And once you have it in a good place, which is the polish, and in this case, publish is coming soon, but think about this now. Now that you have it trained, Imagine doing this every single time versus having it save your writing style so you can call on it. And that's where, you guessed it, plugins come in again. And this is where the Bolt plugin comes in. So if you were to start something to want to train an end chat GPT to write like you, I would suggest start with a browser app, internet plugin, maybe a PDF plugin, and the Bolt plugin. That would be my plugin pack. And at that point, once you're strained, this is price of admission today to listen to this podcast to get the bold plugin. Again, there may be future plugins that save your writing style, but we know the bold one stay, saves your writing style. So maybe I save it as Rajiv Professional, Rajiv Conversational. And once I save it, I can call the, use the bold plugin to call on that writing, writing style to write any future article for me. And that's the power of that plugin. So the best way to do this, to recap, Jimmy, is to start using the right mode, which is with plugins, feeding it articles you've written enough so it can learn, feeding it consistent articles so you're not mixing up styles, and starting with an internet-enabled plugin, a PDF plugin, and a the bold plugin to save the writing style so you can rinse and repeat. And that is a recipe for productivity. So let's do this. Let's just make sure that they've got that because when we have those three plugins, let's just use this, the internet enabled. What was the one that you would suggest on that one? I would go one browser op. Browser op. So B-R-O-W-S-E-R-O-U-P or O-P? I'm OP. trying to remember. O-P. O-P, right. All right. And then the second one would be your PDF one. Which one would you suggest I would there? say AI PDF. 
All right, AI PDF. And then the last one is the uh, bold or bold, bold. Uh, rather. The bold. What is it one more time? And just T-H-E space bolt, B-O-L-T. Okay, perfect. All right, great. So once we have those three in place, we utilize this. We save then whichever tone it is. So for instance, if I'm writing LinkedIn articles, this would be Jimmy's LinkedIn articles. Or if I'm writing emails, it would be Jimmy's email style or whatever it is. And once we've done that, now we've got it where we just go in with that plugin and utilize that in there. So we're prompting, for instance, when we're going back in, let's say we're going back to that language to rewrite another one later. We're going back in with those three as our as our plugins. And then we're putting in there, utilize the writing style of whatever we've saved it, correct? Yep. To write an article about, and then again, we go back to our rise. What is it, you know, that we're looking for as far as it's acting as the role of detailed, you know, copywriter. And we're doing rise. We're doing our four P's. If you haven't seen that, it's episode two. Go back and watch that and uh, utilizing that. Now we've got something that we can literally utilize going forward that we don't have to do all these steps again. We just do them once. And now we're ready to go. Is that correct? That's it. You got it, Jimmy. Yeah, this is um this is one of those efficiencies, Rajiv, that I just think take the time to do this correctly one time and you don't have to keep doing this. You can keep coming back to this well and the water keeps coming every time you visit it. So um, this is one of those really for me, I'll just give you some practical ways we've had agents utilizing this. Number one is, is that we're creating email series or drip campaigns to follow up with new leads. We're utilizing this for our email database where we're basically utilizing it for our monthly newsletter and we're writing articles for the newsletter based on this. We're writing community letters or information. We're utilizing it for writing market updates in our in our tone and our voice. Uh, we're using this for LinkedIn articles on specific topics in our marketplace. So these are a number of different ways. And this, and we're just scratching the surface. If you want to write an article for a local uh, publication or a local website that is someone that attracts people into your area, this is something you can utilize to really start priming this. Again, you want to pull it, but you want to make sure you're polishing everything. But this gives you the ability, really, that once you set this up. Uh, you're off to the races. Literally, it's just a matter of how much, how creative can you think about how to utilize this in a way to get more and more content out there. You want to do, say anything additional, Rajiv, as we wrap this one up? Yeah. So I had an agent reach out to me, Jimmy, the other day and said, hey, I want to be the neighborhood expert, right? Mm -hmm. So which which is a great strategy, obviously. And, I, and she was into chat GPT. She was using AI. How do I leverage this? I said, I exactly taught her this exact same thing that we were talking on this episode. I said, you treat, create a writing style, save it using the Bolt um, plugin. And anytime a new restaurant opens, something's happening, use that style, introduce that to your hyper local market. And it's your voice. And you didn't have to take more than a few seconds to do it. And use rinse and repeat. And there's so many applications to this, right? Once they know the writing style, like, you're, like you mentioned, email, LinkedIn, professional, engaging, conversational, whatever it is, save it. Rinse and repeat it. Guys, if you're looking for more addi additional ways to create efficiencies in your business and leverage artificial intelligence and chat GPT to grow your real estate business, make sure you have subscribed to this podcast. Rajiv and I are going to continue to try to do everything we can to keep you at the tip of the spear with the best information possible to grow your business and serve your clients better. Take care and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.